Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial for the uh, Dash 8Q400. So I'll be taking you through the startup from cold and dark and taxi out and departure. Sorry, I just realised I've run over my headset with my cable with my uh, chair. Okay. <laughs> Interesting start to tutorial. Okay, so let's get straight onto it. Parking brake set. That's this big yellow stripey thing here. Documentation on board doors open. So, and uh, now, hmm, let's bring up the FMC. Turn that on. The other one on. Just going to have to wait for the efforts. Usually it starts with it already on but I've just got to wait for the FMC to switch on. It's quite a complicated plane to uh, comparatively with some of the other planes um, certainly the Airbus A320 and to a degree the 737 to get started up. It's quite fiddly, it's quite awkward. Uh, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this plane to be honest. I, <laughs> I enjoy flying it but at the same time I don't. That makes any sense. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a handful which makes it fun and frustrating in equal measure. Um, so we just click accept here and accept on the FMC on the other side there and then also we have this we just press there to recalibrate uh, these so yeah, first thing we want to do is open the doors and you find that on the data page, services and exits. And you have to click them one, you can't just go click, 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 doesn't work like that. That's one annoying feature. You have to go click, wait, wait for the arrows to come back, click, make yourself a cup of coffee, come back, drink that, wait. And finally, this one. Okay, we've got that all done, so we can now hook ourselves up to GSX. Hopefully. Unless it's going to tell me my gate's too small or something. No, I didn't want... <sighs> Did I just click the wrong thing like a complete idiot? No. Go away. Let's try again, shall we? <laughs> Boarding no longer possible. Oh, you total idiot. This is a great start to this tutorial. This is fortunately not a tutorial for GSX. So anyway, let's... We can still do the... Yeah, okay, so we can still do the pushback at least. So let's imagine... <laughs> let's imagine that... Um, that everybody's happily... Um, boarding. <laughs> Why is it every time I do one of these tutorials something goes wrong? Okay, so where were we? So the doors are open. Okay, the next thing we need to do is check the batteries are on. Well, they obviously are because we've got power to the aircraft, although that is possibly because do we have ground power on? No, I don't think we do actually. Um, so anyway, the batteries are on, so we want the main bus tie on. Uh, let's see, safety equipment, landing doors. The next thing we need to check, very important with this aircraft, is that you have the three safety pins in the bag here. One, two, three. Three gear pins, rather, because if they're not there, you won't be able to put your landing gear up. Engine intake doors are green. They're not because we haven't started the APU and we don't have ground power connected. So we're going to start the APU. And I don't know why I'm pressing that. And I've got that there. So to start the APU, just press power there. And then a few seconds later, start. And then we just got to wait for this uh, gen generator light to come on, which takes a little bit of time. I don't know if we get anything on the displays that informs us anything that's going on. Not on these ones, probably if I switch to some different ones. But anyway, it's enough that we wait up here. And as soon as that warning comes on, we can turn it on. And there you see your engine intake doors are now on. Um, so next we want to put the radios on uh, down here. And we just turn them one on. You'll notice there's some other options here, the last one being FMS. Now, if we switch around to FMS, what that allows us to do is to tune the radio through the um, 
the FM uh, the FMC here. For example, you can tune the you just go to where well, it says tune, and then you can tune any of your radios. Um, through that's useful if you just want to put in the um, ILS frequencies, for example. Anyway, we've got the radios on. Next thing we want to do is set the landing altitude on the um, pressurization panel. Now, if I just quickly jump onto my Navigraph charts, in fact, I realize I don't need to do that. I can just go up here, go nav log. That's uh, so one. And it will tell us the elevation down the bottom here, 309. So we just spin this round. It goes in sort of quite large increments. So sort of halfway between these two, isn't it? So we'll put it on 249. It doesn't make too much difference. Uh, engine starts one and two. We now select to norm. There are these two switches here. And packs should be on auto. They're here. And you can see they're both already on auto. Recirc fan can be turned on. That's the one up here. And the bleeds, bleed air are off and the dial to minimum. Temper control is required. I just literally spin them around to so they're both little lines are facing upwards. Passenger signs on. So we've got the fasten seatbelt signs and the no smoking signs. And the emergency lights are already armed. That's just here. Do miss the side vents. Well, we better put those on, otherwise the screen does mist up. And no steering off. That is this little switch tucked behind the steering tiller here. Steering on, steering off. Flight taxi switch should be set to taxi. That's the switch up here. It's currently set on taxi. Uh, your dampener. Uh, that's a YD over on here, so we switch that on. Anti-skid switch, we come over to the right hand side here for this, that's on. The control lock on, and the control lock is this big um, lever there. Power levers to a disc, so we just adjust the throttle levers just up slightly. And condition levers, we need to cut the fuel off because they're currently left on max. So we can just bring them down, fuel off. And next we want to set the QNH so we can get that from Active Sky. At the departure station, we can see the QNH is 1019. So we have to fiddle around with it manually ourselves to style this. Thank you. 1019, yep. Okay, uh, so now we can put the flight plan in. And we come down to the FMC. Now, the. Uh, so, what we're going to do quickly is close the doors first. The uh, So, we come down to the exit. It's the same slow process for closing the doors as it is for opening them. Now, as far as the FMC goes for this plane, it really is an FMC that only a mother could love. I hate this damn thing. It is. Uh, different shall we say it's not as intuitive perhaps or as free-flowing as the Airbus or um, as Boeing um, FMC's and of course naturally we have to press the forward door twice to get the damn thing to close no idea why it is now closing Okay, so the first thing we want to do now is we want to click on nav and then we click up here and we want to put in where we are going from which is EGJB Echo Golf Juliet Bravo which is the ICAO code for Guernsey. We're flying from Guernsey today up to Manchester although obviously this will just cover the departure it won't be a full flight. Uh, enter that and we obviously it comes up says yeah we're in Guernsey we accept that and then likewise Manchester is E G C C at least I, I believe it is I'm pretty sure it is doubt myself now let's double check I'm pretty certain it is uh, yes well I should have just hit enter it soon tell me if it's Manchester or not won't it there we are Manchester uh, it says the elevation, funnily enough, is only 257, so it totally disagrees with what my navigation thing there said. Okay, so we got that in. So now we can go to... 
and a flight plan and from the menu we go to depart and just to be annoying we have to put in the airport again at least you do the way I set this up maybe there's another way you can set this FMC up where you don't so yeah rather annoying we have to put the same crap in again I've no idea why um, maybe that other step wasn't even necessary but I'm pretty sure it is and we're departing out in fact we will have to get our clearance from Pro ATC before I tell you where we're departing out I'm really muddling things up here aren't I so I hope you're still following this I told you this airport uh, airport aircraft was uh, was fiddly in the least obviously if you don't have Pro ATC you can get um, the runways by just looking at the um, the, the winds or from um, flight radar 24 or from simstatus.com is one I typically uh, use so let's tune to the ground frequency or the dispatch uh, frequency uh, let's see flight plan information calm we want to set uh, 132.20 so we just come down onto the one three Echo four, Juliet, Bravo, two. Airport information. Echo one four two zero Zulu weather wind zero six one. Nice. Okay, a clearance delivery. Clearance delivery. F L Y three K K. Parking position is terminal one. Parking position one with the information request clearance. Yeah, uh, let's remember it's one of these things we had to press X a couple of times to get to work. I do believe. Flight plan information. Oh, one, two, three. Ah, oh, Jesus. What is wrong with me today? <laughs> shall I just... I tell you what, shall I just quit this tutorial now? Because, um... <laughs> there we go. It's been a long day, okay? I've been up since 20 past five this morning. Um... And now we got to listen to, uh... These guys prattling away in French for a while. That's lovely for you, isn't it? <sighs> Jesus. I love you, Pro ATCX. You really know how to annoy the life out of me. <sighs> May I? Thank you. FLY3KK cleared to EGCC via ORT Alpha 3 Echo departure and then as filed. Climb and maintain 4000. Expect flight level 170 within 10 minutes after departure. Departure. So attitude we can set here to 4000. Squawk 6132. QNH 1019. 6132 for the squawk. So we just click down here and set 6. Flight level 170 within 10 minutes after departure. Departure. 132. And just bring it up to the top there. FLY3KK. Read back correct. Contact ground control on 121.8. Confirm. Roger. Right. So let's come back to our FMC a minute. And you will see that we are going to be departing our runway 9. So we, have, we don't put runway 9 in, we put the number. So number 1. And the SID we're going to be using is the Auto 3 Echo Departure. Auto 3 Echo Departure is number 6. So put numbers in rather than actually type in the, the letters as we would in um, in other... Uh... Yeah, in fact what I'm going to do now is we're going to go back to the menu and we're going to plug in the arrival. Now we're arriving into E... G C C except and we're going to be expecting five right that's number two uh, on the Dane one Bravo arrival Dane one Bravo arrival number seven there we go okay and we come to the uh, flight plan again so now we can go here and so we revert to what Simbrief has for our routing. So from Autac we are direct to Domit. Um, so let's see now. Uh, maybe I'll do this now. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there we are. No link. And we put in D O M 
you T. Damn it, we have to accept that. Yeah, told you it's tedious. Uh, and then we have an air airway L980, and for that we have to go, I believe, no, sorry, overflow. Jesus. Uh, I think. <laughs> sorry, my bad. List. Airway. So I don't fly this plane. I don't know why I'm doing a tutorial for this plane because I've hardly ever flown it. Um, so. And then we put in one for the airway, enter. And then we have to say here where the airway's going to, which is to Kathy. It's going to Kathy, which is number two. We enter that there. Okay, and then from Kathy, we are P83. So we go a list again, airway. It does give you a list of the available airways. It's quite a good feature. That's easy enough, just put it in yourself. And that takes us to Sam, number two there. And then from Sam, we want Q401. So again, we go a list. And again, we go airways. And we go number eight. And that takes us to Pepys, number one. From Pepys, we want a Yankee 321. Airway, a Yankee 321 number 2, and, uh, and that's taking us to a CPT, Charlie Papa Tango, that's number 2, and, uh, and then we go direct to DTY, so DTY, and uh, we accept that, and then from DTY it's Y250, and that will take us into Leicester. So Y250. So once more, uh, airway Y250, number eight. And in fact, we don't really need Leicester in twice. So what we can do now is we can go delete and delete. And then that's our flight plan. We come down now to um, DTO and we put number one in, set our current position. Fuel, uh, there is like a little external app that you can set this up precisely if you so wish. I'm not really going to take you through that because there's enough other stuff you need to remember about worrying about that. So it's enough if you just want to get going, just put in some some various values here, that's at 500 for cargo uh, zero fuel weight obviously we'd have fuel on board we take you can adjust your fuel on board, I'm going to leave it on a full load, I mean it's way more than we need but it doesn't really have, I mean you can adjust it through the um, external setting if you so wish in fact because uh, I'm only supposed to need about 3,000 kilos of fuel and we got five, about 5,200 kilos on board uh, which which will be enough uh, for return at values again you can get this from your flight plan on Simbrief again um, I just don't always have too much time to go into such detail so I just want to keep it simple for you um, but obviously if you so wish to put proper values in you can get that from your sim brief charts in and you just put the relevant values in there so anyway the fuel set up uh, we just skip back to the flight plan it's pretty much the FMC program now um, let me just <laughs> not forget that this time round I don't know how I suddenly remembered that um, okay, so we have programmed the FBL and the fuel. Transponder squawk we've entered in. The power lever, we next now press the toga button, which is on the side of the power lever here. And you should see these two appear here if you've pressed it successfully. Uh, nav source, we switch to the uh, FMS. It's called an FMS. FMS. FMC. Heading bag set, runway heading, well, we are departing out from uh, flight plan information, runway 9, we, uh, that woman has a really irritating voice on the background ATC chatter, at least it does become irritating when you've heard it 5,000 times, in the beginning you're like, wow, that sounds cool, that's awesome. Um, you can add your own extra additional files into Pro ATC, but I'm not here to talk about Pro ATC. Let's carry on with um, 
So then heading back, altitude bag, so uh, our initial climb is 4000 I believe, so we just press altitude select and then we press VS and we want a climb rate, make sure you don't put a negative climb rate by the way. You want a climb rate, probably an initial climb rate of about uh, 1800 and the dash is probably enough. Um, okay, so we now need to select our V speeds. So I've got a little chart here, uh, which is from my VA virtual airline, but you probably can easily find similar stuff on, on Google anywhere. Um, so if we just come back to the fuel, and you can see if we come back to our previous page, because it's put us on page two, we see our gross weight is just over 28,000 kilos, and that tells me that with a flaps 10 departure, which we'll be doing, and below 20 centigrade, uh, we're going to need um, around about or 122 for the uh, V1 and VR, but so no, sorry, the V1 is 120, and the V. Uh, the rotate is one, two, two. So let's put those in. So we press select here and we enter the first speed in. It's going to be 120. And then we for V1, VR, it's going to be 122. And there's no auto throttle on this plane. So this is just a guide. This is not going to make your plane fly at this speed or anything, by the way. So it's just as a to put a little reference marker down the side of your uh, display here okay so we've done that uh, let's see V speeds okay doors we've closed camera report seat anti-collision lights we can now turn to red we have a nice selection of anti-collision lights on board here red we can put them on now if I can remember where they are they're right in front of me why can't I here they are yeah red and the APU bleed is off, which it is anyway. And we're ready for to push back and start. We're departing out from one, uh, runway 9. So let me just check on my charts which way we need to be um, positioning the plane for a runway 9 departure. So let's see. We are there. I need to push back to the right. Ground gas gallon Y three KK. Quest start up and push back. Yes, gallon Y three KK. Start up and push back approved. Roger, yes, gallon Y three KK. So JSX uh, nose to the right. Perf push back and departure. Nose right. And you want some engines? Okay, so he will come around with his little uh, pushback uh, thing now, and do his uh, do his stuff. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. It always takes a little bit of time. Locking gear. There we go, thank you very much, my good man. So to wait a few minutes whilst he um, sorts himself out. Check completed. Oh, Bypass been inserted. Release parking brakes. Okay, so we can release parking brake. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Start at will. So we can flick this switch to select two and press start there. And then we come down to the throttles. We just watch this come around a little bit. And then we can introduce some fuel. Just nudge the two up to start and feather.
to that and build up speed. But now we go and to number one and press start there. And likewise, we can introduce fuel to engine number one. And if you look outside, you'll see the engine spooling up nicely there. God, why is that grass so green? That does look unnaturally green, doesn't it? <laughs> I'd have to play with my settings again because that grass looks horrendously too green. Is grass really that green? Maybe on the other side, who knows. Unfortunately, the, the wheels don't seem to spin around. That's one disappointing feature of this aircraft. Okay, so once those are um, up and running, we can now turn off the APU. And we just need to set my parking brake quickly, a nice big yellow parking brake lever there. Okay, so we've turned off the APU. The main bus tie switch that we turned on at the beginning can also be turned off. Electrical panels checked. Condition levers can now be put up to max. And auto feather we want to turn on there. Auxiliary pumps are here and here. Now we've got the standby hydraulics, pressure and PTU control, which are here and here. Flaps and speed, so we set flaps, 10 flaps. Uh, let's see, a rudder, nose steering is on. Let's just verify the nose wheel steering is on. Steering on, there we go. Uh, bleeds on minimum. Bleeds, there we go, then there. De icing, I always turn it on whether it's icing conditions or not, because invariably you do get some icing at some point. Uh, transponder, we can now put on, and to do that, we just hold, click, and hold down here, and it becomes that. And taxi lights, we can turn on, and obviously our position lights as well, on and on. Anti-collision lights can be left to say ah. Uh, okay, so we're good for taxi. Request taxi to runway. Ground get Gallant Y 3KK. Request taxi. Get Gallant Y 3KK. Taxi via Delta 2 runway 0 Niner. Okay, that's pretty straightforward taxi. So I just have to use the stick with the way I've got my control set up. I have to use the steering tiller here, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit awkward for taxiing. Bear with me on this. So we throttle forwards a little bit, not too much, because otherwise you, I find it really hard to taxi prop aircraft in this uh, these simulators. I can't taxi any prop aircraft very well at all, and the. Uh, the dash is no oops, the dash is no exception. <laughs> See, oops, we need to slow ourselves down a little bit. There we go. I'll be glad when we get away from this ATC, because it does I don't actually use Pro ATC so much these days, as I said, you do a lot of flying online. Or I just listen to real live ATC. Um, so it's not often actually, it is good, Pro ATC. I probably will review it in another video, or take you through how to set it up in another video at some point. As it certainly helped me a lot in uh, getting to grips with various procedures and and certainly learning the term and ATC terminology, it's quite useful for that. So yeah, the runway is not hugely long here, but we should easily have enough here. It's just over 5,000 feet long, so we should, should have enough. I'm not sure what the takeoff It's got quite usually quite a short takeoff distance uh, for a, a dash, so we not, shouldn't have too much hassle with, the, with that.
Just one thing I want to do on the autopilot is set it to nav, so it'll be like the L nav mode, pretty much. Um, oops. See, it's very <laughs> steering tiller is so sensitive. Of you. I have no idea what they're actually saying in all the French. I mean, they could be talking about, you know, can you go and get me some potatoes out of the supermarket, please, for dinner? I don't know. What are they saying? Obviously, aviation related stuff. In reality. It's just my ignorance, I haven't a clue what they're saying. Okay, so we are now obviously approaching the holding point, so we will get permission to depart out. Let's take a Oops, going backwards, don't we going backwards. Okay, confirm instruction. So, we'll sit on the runway and we'll run through the uh, rest of the uh, checklist items we need to be aware of. Oh, it's one of my better efforts at straightening this up for departure. Okay! Right, so what we want to do now, parking brake, well we haven't got that on, flight controls to check. Uh, see, control lock, we want to take the uh, control lock off there. This is the parking brake set. Pito static heaters, we need to turn on. You see these things here, so we need to turn the pitos on, there we go. Uh, the yes, is required, we've already got flight taxi switch, we change to flight mode now, there we go. And um, autopilot heading, okay, transponder is on, landing lights on, taxi lights off, there we go. And collision lights can be moved to white. There we are. Obviously, we want to set that to nav, as I already said. So it's our nav there. Okay, and I think we're all good. We can now depart out. Okay, we can rotate. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. I'll put the autopilot on straight away. So positive rate of climb, okay, autopilot we've already engaged, condition the levers, we can chop down to 900 already. Contact departure on 126.05. Confirm. We can start putting the flaps up. I'll drive transfer 7 to 4, uh, direct to Mount Zero, keep uh, high uh, rate. Departure FLNY 3KK, passing 1,900 for 4,000. FLNY 3KK, radar contact, continue. We have an outboard, heat, alpha 3, echo, departure, unmaintain 4,000. Eh. Cleared by ALR, alpha 3, echo, departure, climbing. Why we're making the... Making a turn now, yes, we're making a turn now. It's quite foggy. Okay, so next we can turn some things off. These two can come off under the hydraulic controls. The uh, auxiliary pumps can come off, as too can the auto feather there. We need to slow down a bit because we're going to go over speed in a minute if we're not careful.
Weather radar, we can turn on down here, um, round to there, and then this WX for the weather radar. There we are. Doing around navigation, right? Hopefully we'll get further climbs soon. Whilst we're waiting flat, what you can do is you can actually uh, copy across your flight plan. This is always a good idea if you need to make um, changes to your flight plan and you make mistakes. It's always handy because then you have a backup copy across here which you can uh, input back across a really quite useful feature. Okay, hopefully we get cleared a little bit higher. I will end this tutorial shortly as there's not much left to cover apart from when you reach cruise. Uh, these levers are knocked back to 850. Um, and at some point we also put the um, bleeds, in fact, yeah, the bleeds we can now put on to, probably should have already done that a little bit earlier. Uh, bleeds can come on to, sorry, here, norm. There we go. So yeah, I'll just switch over to the standard barrier pressure and then once that's done I will end this tutorial. We will of course be carrying on towards Manchester. I'm surprised how foggy it is. I didn't expect this weather at all. Jeez, it's horrendous. So there we go, that is pretty much how you get this aircraft up and running, um, or at least how I get it up and running. As you can see, it's uh, it, it's hard enough to do without having to try and talk through it, and uh, you'll see I sort of to get a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit mixed up in places, but I hope you managed to follow that through all okay, and it made sort of sense. Um, Obviously, as always, any uh, further questions or comments, uh, yeah, just leave them below or uh, or on my Facebook page. That's um, absolutely fine, and uh, I'll do my best to respond um, as uh, as quickly as I can. I'm I'm by no means an expert on this plane. I don't have anywhere near as many hours on it as I do the. Um, the A320 and um, especially the 737, I have vastly more hours on those two aircraft, so I know them pretty well. Uh, I'm still pretty much actually on quite a learning curve on this this thing. I do have a reasonable amount of hours in it now, but um, yeah, still a lot I don't know about this aircraft. But uh, hopefully, I've got covered them enough of the basics to um, allow you to be able to get this thing up and running. Uh, let's just climb that. So we stick that to uh, every time you change an altitude and it's not already climbing or descending, don't forget and uh, put VS and up to uh, obviously, oops, not that amount of climb back 2000. Don't forget to press altitude select because otherwise, if you don't, then it won't level off when you want it to. You can increase throttle now as we're climbing. Just don't forget also, obviously, this plane doesn't have auto throttle. So you will have to make throttle adjustments as you climb, descend and turn and so forth. Um, so that's something else to remember as well. Oh, well I've still got the terrain view there. That's, uh, that'll give me the weather radar. There we go. Brilliant. So we'll be switching over to standard very shortly and that will pretty much wrap it up for this tutorial. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will see you again. Standard QNH is 1013. Uh, I'll see you again uh, on another stream or video. Bye for now.